It's a miserable day in Vancouver, so I'm doing the review of Far Cry 5 inside, and it's nice and toasty and warm in here. I have been huddled around Far Cry 5 for many hours. It's another one of these Ubisoft open world, uh, explore everywhere and kill lots of bad guys type of game. Uh, that is very, very hard to pull yourself away from. And Far Cry 5, I would argue, is the most difficult Far Cry game to put down and walk away from that I've ever played. More so than even Far Cry 3, the revolutionary Far Cry 3, and the exceptionally well-made Far Cry 4. This game is uh, so addictive, and there's just so much moment-to-moment -moment sort of game candy for you to continuously enjoy. This is a grisly story uh, set in Montana. This you know, the big deal here is this is the first Far Cry game set in the United States. It's in a fictional uh, place called Hope County, and it's split up into different areas that are all uh, managed by this family called the Seed family, led by Joseph Seed, who is kind of this new, uh, you know, messiah figure for this cult. And he's got a whole bunch of brainwashed, uh, uh, you know, citizens of hope. And they do a lot of killing of innocents. Uh, and there's some really grotesque stuff in here that you're going to see all over the place. But that's kind of par for the course with Far Cry, which has always been this kind of balance of uh, really just brutal, you know, bloody violence that you see juxtaposed against uh, almost a dark comedy kind of vibe. He's got the diabetes. There is, uh, you know, absolutely some uh, depth to the storytelling and the messaging around this game about, uh, you know, people's sort of um, reliance on, on uh, religious culture and to an effect gun culture, which is kind of interesting to be uh, having that so much in the media right now and to be playing a game like this at the exact same time. It's fascinating. Uh, it doesn't really get super political or anything like that, and I, I think absolutely the game, uh, you know, pokes fun at, at all sides of the political spectrum as it's painting its tail. Uh, but, you, you know, I think you you kind of set a lot of that stuff aside and you just sort of get lost in the experience of it. Lots of, uh, you know, enemies to take down. You've got outposts to sort of overcome and, wi and wipe out all the bad guys in there. Uh, they've added a new guns for hire system, which you've probably heard about, where you can have a little dog buddy. You can also hire a, a guy in a plane that will come and strafe all kinds of bad guys for you or snipers. And there's a whole bunch of other guns for hire that you will continue to unlock. And they kind of act like, a, you, you know, your AI counterpart but uh, they really do assist you in missions, sometimes making it a little bit easy. Sometimes you can just sort of select targets and have the plane come in and bomb everybody or, or machine gun everybody to death, or you can watch your, your dog run in and start to gnawing on people's flesh and stuff. Of course, you've got cool abilities like being able to uh, jump into a plane and fly all over the place and then jump out with your parachute or your wingsuit. Uh, you can zip line and grapple up and climb up different things. You've got all kinds of great abilities. A lot of that stuff we've seen before in other Far Cry games. But the I think the level of fidelity, the beauty that's on display, um, the crispness in the uh, the narrative kind of pacing and also the engagement of all of the, uh, the you know, these these micro moments and these, these cool, flashy, uh, visceral experience moments that you play through this game. There's lots and lots of obvious gun combat that you're going to get into, which is solid. There is some superfluous, you know, elements and missions where you're going to feel, oh my god, do I have to do this? Like, you know, obviously, pursuit missions and follow missions, and you're going to be climbing up a bunch of stuff. Definitely not as many towers and things like that that you've done before. There's, there is a routine here that you're going to be familiar with, but it's it's tuned and it's elegant and you're you're not bored and one of the great new things that they've added is a, a, a fast travel system that's really elegant so you can get into these uh, firefights and into these missions a lot quicker um, you don't feel like you're wasting time and I feel like that was one of the complaints that you could lodge against Far Cry 4 when you looked at that massive map and all of the things that you had to do and all the trudging that you had to do to get all of that stuff done. This isn't that. You actually are engaged and thrust into the experience really quickly and you get a lot done in a shorter amount of time and it feels satisfying. <laughs> And they've also added co-op mode in here, which I played with Sid Bolton from the uh, the PC and Game Museum out in Ontario there. And he was uh, flying a plane while, while I was in the back and we were landing and taking over some of the outposts together, which was really cool and fun. 
But Far Cry, I think because it's so ingrained to me to be a single player game, I felt more comfortable playing it as a single player. You feel like more of a badass if you can deal with all the confrontations and, and uh, you know, objectives on your own, at least for me. I mean, I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are gonna love playing co-op. They've also added this Far Cry arcade and I dropped into there. It was uh, more elaborate and more um, about fine tuning than I had time for, but I was immediately impressed and realized that, oh my God, this is gonna to, uh, not quite like Super Mario Maker or something like that, uh, or even Little Big Planet, but I feel like there's going to be a ton of content that's going to be coming out at us very quickly, and it's going to be very interesting to drop back in and see what the community starts building for this. I do wish that the game ran at 60 frames per second. It's starting to, you know, we're sort of edging to the uh, to the upper levels of what we can see with these current gen systems with fidelity and frame rates uh, and sort of the vast open world that's crafted for us. Not that it's choppy. I would just like it to go up to the next level. I also feel that one of the biggest challenges that Far Cry 5 has is that it doesn't sort of out-revolutionize the industry like Far Cry 3 did. Far Cry 3 was so memorable and it crafted so many cool systems and I, I feel like it kind of knocked the wind out of Far Cry 4 sales and it's still a shadow looming over Far Cry 5. You know, we're still doing a lot of the same mechanics and a lot of the same system, jumping into boats and, uh, you know, blowing stuff up from the air. But at the end of the day, this is an exceptionally well-made game. It's one of Ubisoft's strongest open world experiences, and I'm saying this coming off of their unbelievably great uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. As a package, uh, I think this is uh, irrefutable. This is an amazing game built by very talented and uh, passionate people that wanted to build us something really, really fun. <laughs> It doesn't blow me away like the uh, the experience of playing Far Cry 3 did for the very first time, but it, you can't refute the amount of enjoyment you're gonna get out of this package. A terrific game, and it gets a nine out of 10 for me.